Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Brett Strohecker with New Beginnings Church of Middletown, Pennsylvania. Well, it's a cold and crisp morning here in South Central Pennsylvania, but we also have that S word in the weather forecast, and I'm not real happy about that this morning because I'm ready for the other S word, which is spring, and because I'm a more of a warm weather person. So knowing that they're saying that we possibly might have some S under B conditions, and I don't want to say the words, because I don't want to speak them into existence. I'm hoping that the storm somehow makes a change or does a different direction before it gets here, and it doesn't do any harm to anyone else. So, Lord, if you're willing, please make this storm pass from us, but let your will be done and not our own. So, <laughs> little levity here this morning. Uh, yes, I haven't had my first cup of coffee yet, so I'm a little giddy. But today we're going to continue our Closer to God series, and uh, we're going to talk about Jesus calling Levi, better known as Matthew, to be one of his disciples. So let's pick it up here in Matthew chapter 2, and this is at verse 13. Then Jesus went out to the lake shore again and taught the crowds that gathered around him. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collection booth. Come, be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. That night, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to be his dinner guest, along with his fellow tax collectors and many other notorious sinners. That's the words from the Bible, not from me. There were many people of this kind among the crowds that followed Jesus. Wow. You know, all we, we always say about not hanging out with the wrong crowd. Well, it seems like the wrong crowd was drawn to Jesus. But that's a good thing. We'll talk about that in a minute. But when some of the teachers of religious law who were Pharisees saw him eating with people like that. I love that. People like that. Who are you going to bring to church? People like that. You know, anybody that says that, that's not a good Christian. Anyway, getting back to the story here, with people like that, they said to his disciples, Why does he eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he told them, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call sinners, not those who think they are already good enough. Ooh, a little bit of harshness there, don't you think? Jesus was really kind of calling them out at that point, don't you think? Boy, I keep moving this camera around. I can't get situated. I'm in my car. Long story. Don't have time to talk about it right now. Anyway, um, so here we have Jesus out among the masses again preaching. Notice he's always preaching the world. He's taking the responsibility and taking every opportunity he can to preach the good news of the gospel to everyone that he encounters. And that's a lesson to us in itself that we should never, ever, ever be afraid to share the good news of the gospel. In fact, we should be praying to the Lord and asking him, is there someone that can he, he can put in our path today that needs to know the gospel, needs to know the good news, or maybe has never heard the good news before? I know in this world it's kind of hard because people are afraid of offending someone, or people aren't very receptive to the word of the Lord because it's a sensitive subject. Well, we can't let fear get in our way. In fact, God tells us how many times in the Bible not to be afraid. So we can't be afraid to share the gospel of Christ with those that are around us or those that we encounter or meet along the way, because it's very important that we do just that. Anyway, uh, here we have Jesus walking along and he notices Matthew, uh, who is a tax collector. Now, Jesus knows us. He is God. He is God in the flesh. He knows each one of us. He knows the calling that he has on each of our lives. So when he came to Matthew, here's a guy that's a tax collector, not well liked in that culture and time because some tax collectors were very uh, shady people. In fact, they uh, sometimes would cheat people out of their money or take too many taxes or, you know, they were just not known as good people. So here is Jesus seeing Matthew, and he knows what's in Matthew's heart. So the fact that he's a tax collector and probably a sinner like all of us, because the Bible says that all of us are sinners and we all have fallen short of God's glory. 
But anyway, he sees Matthew, and even though he's a tax collector, that doesn't matter to Jesus. Jesus has a calling on his life, and he calls him and says, come, be my disciple. So Matthew decides that, hey, that's a good idea. And that tells us something about Matthew. Number one, it tells us that Jesus was right about him, that he had a good heart within him. And number two, Matthew knew the right thing to do when Jesus called upon him. When Jesus has a calling on our lives or he calls upon us to do something, we need to be ready to drop everything and follow what he has us to do. And I know that's not an easy thing and people don't like giving up control of their lives, but when the Lord calls you, you need to be willing and ready and able and answer that call immediately. I mean, think about it. When we pray to the Lord, so many of us are hoping for an immediate answer. So why will we wait for God or make God wait on us, rather, uh, when he calls us to do something? You know, if we're not going to expect it, or if we don't want to wait around, boy, I'm really, I really do need that cup of coffee, don't I? If we're not willing to wait around for answers to our prayers from the Lord, then he should not have to wait around for us to answer his calling. And I know... Um, this is coming from a pastor who fought his calling for about 16 years, but you know, I take my faith very seriously. And the reason why I fought it for so long is, is because I was convinced I wasn't the right person. The Lord was convinced that I was, and he had to convince me that I was, and he did. Uh, so I know and realize that we're all stubborn and sometimes we don't want to immediately answer that call, but. Here's an example we need to follow in the scripture. Matthew has everything going for him. He probably is living a comfortable lifestyle. He's probably comfortable in his job. He's probably in a comfort zone that he doesn't want disrupted, but yet he's willing to drop everything and follow Jesus. And when he does, he throws a big celebration. I mean, look at this. He, what does he do? He calls Jesus and his disciples into his home for a great dinner amongst his friends. He's celebrating that the Lord called him. That's a reason to celebrate. And he knew it. And he was celebrating. Meanwhile... Of course, in life, we all have our critics, don't we? I know you do because I read your post on Facebook, and a lot of you sometimes or many times take the opportunity to complain and strike back at your critics. We all do that. I know I have done it too. I mean, uh, not pointing fingers because, you know, every time you point a finger at somebody, there's three more pointing back at you. So, okay. But anyway, you know, and just, you're the same. You did it. You're no different. Think about that. But anyway, Matthew wants to celebrate with his friends, but there's critics outside and the critics say to his disciples, what kind of man is this? What kind of prophet or what kind of religious man would hang out with such scum? Because it says in the Bible, he was not only hanging out with Matthew's friends who were tax collectors, but a lot of notorious sinners. These are people that had bad reputation. And, you know, the Bible says something to the fact that, you know, why were they, why was Jesus hanging out with those kind of people? You know, recently um, I was struck by the Lord to start a recovery program and one of the um, pushbacks I got from the recovery program uh, was the question, well, what kind of people are we talking about here to bring to this recovery plan? Well, the same kind of people we need to bring into church, the, the notorious sinners like ourselves. You know, we cannot be hypocritical about this. Like I said, the Bible clearly points us out and calls us out. We are all sinners. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. So, you know, anytime if you're in a church and someone makes a statement, well, do we really want to uh, have those kind of people come here? That's a church that you probably shouldn't be at because the church is welcome to all those who need the Lord. Like Jesus said, you know, the sick don't need... Uh, anybody else but a doctor, you know, why would someone who's healthy need a doctor? Well, you know, only the sick need a doctor. Boy, I'm really blowing that line, aren't I? Let's backtrack. Again, 
you know, I got two things that I have excuses for this morning. Number one, the time change. I hope everybody remembered to put their clocks forward by one hour. So we all lost one hour of sleep last night. So there's reason number one why I'm stumbling on my words. Reason number two, no coffee yet, but we'll get there. Anyway, let's backtrack. What did Jesus say? Sick people are the ones that need a doctor. And I have come to call upon the sinner, not the people who think they are already good enough. And that's kind of a real admonishment to the Pharisees and the critics that are sitting there saying, why is he hanging out with such scum? Why is he hanging out with sinners? Why is he hanging out with those notorious bad people of the community? Well, those are the people that need him. And those are the people that the Pharisees and the religious leaders need to be reaching out to. And obviously they're not. They'd rather hang out with all their religious friends and keep to their own religious community. Folks, do not go to a church that is that way. If your church is not in the business of empowering and equipping people to go out and find those that are lost, those that need to come to the Lord, those that need the Lord, then you're in the wrong church. I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. You know, in today's world, they're trying to box church congregations into their buildings and say, you know what, practice your religion there, but leave us alone. That's not what we're called to do as a church. We are called to uphold one another in the faith. We are called to go out into our communities and find those that need the Lord and bring them to the Lord. That doesn't mean that we are responsible for their spiritual maturity. I mean, we do have a responsibility. Wait, let, let me backtrack again, the coffee thing. We are responsible for their maturity, their spiritual maturity, because we are all to grow together in our knowledge and wisdom of the Lord and also in our faith. But we need to bring people to the Lord so that they can establish a relationship with him, so that they can be introduced to him. So we need to invite them. Then we need to embrace them. And we need to embrace each other. We need to keep each other accountable in the faith. And that takes a lot of work. It's not like we can just show up on a Sunday morning and say we're part of the club or we're a member. What is a member? A member is just a name on a list. If you are a faithful follower of Christ, you will be practicing your faith every day, regardless of if you're at church or at home or wherever you may be. Don't be hypocritical with your faith. You need to live it out. You need to read the word, study it, understand it, embrace it, and then live it. So, you know, we need to invite people into our churches. We need to embrace people who are in our churches and help one another grow in the faith. And then we need to empower people to go out and find others that are lost, that Jesus wants us to reach on his behalf. We are the body of Christ. We are the ones that are called to do the work. The Lord is the head of the church. He's the one that's calling the shots. We don't need to be sitting back in our ivory towers or our nice church buildings or our nice church sanctuaries and feeling good about ourselves because we're a member of a church. There's more to it than that. We are ambassadors for the kingdom of heaven. We are the children of the living God. And our father has work for us to do. He didn't just place us on this planet to eat, drink, and be merry. He placed us on this planet to make a difference and utilize the skills, gifts, talents, and abilities that he blessed us with so that we can make a difference in this world, make a difference in people's lives. I mean, think about it. If we made a difference in just one person's life each week that we live, that means that we're, we're impacting 52 people a year. And then depending on how long we live, that starts adding up to a lot of people. And sometimes it's even more than that, but the Lord's not going to use us the Lord is not going to bless us. The Lord is not going to empower us unless we fully surrender to him and unless we're fully obedient to his word. Once we surrender to him and are obedient to his word, we are showing how much that we love him. And if we show love to him, he's going to bless that and he's going to empower us to make a difference in this world. That's what we're here for. We're not here to live it up. We're here to live a life led by Christ and following in his footsteps so that we can make this world a better place, so that we can be prepared for the time that we will live in the kingdom of heaven. And that's eternity. 
This life is so short and so brief. It's just we are here just to get prepared for the rest of our life, which is where we are really intended to live, and that's in heaven. So too many people sell themselves short, or too many people miss out on the greatest opportunity ever offered to them. You know, God created you for a reason, and he wants to see if you're willing to live up to that purpose and reason and answer his calling while you live here on this life, so that he knows where to place you in eternity. Because, you know, not only do we get chosen as to whether we enter the kingdom of heaven or not, or we go to the other place. Um, but anyway, it also determines what our station will be in the kingdom of heaven. What will be our purpose then? What will be God's calling on our life then? And that calling is one that will last an eternity. And too many people miss out on this opportunity. Too many people miss out on what would be an amazing life in heaven, serving the Lord and being in his presence. Now, I know that that might not sound attractive to some of you, but if it's not sounding attractive to you, then you don't know God. You don't know what's in his word, and you need to get to know him as soon as possible because you never know when he's going to call you home. You never know when your life will come to an end because God has already predetermined that for you. So it could be today, for all you know, could be tomorrow. So why sit around idle and not take advantage of what God is giving you the chance at. Too many people miss this chance and it breaks God's heart that they just ignore him and don't even want to look into this chance because it really does determine where they spend eternity. And sometimes that eternity is a wake up call for them in the worst way imaginable. So God doesn't want you to be one of those people, and neither do I. That's why I do these devotionals. That's why I'm so into God's word. That is why I'm so serious about my faith. Now, I might not seem like it uh, when I'm out there because I know I joke around, and I know I like to have a good time um, within reason, not a sinful good time. But I'm a sinner just like anybody else. So it's not that I'm immune to sin. But I want to live a happy, healthy life, but I want to make a difference by bringing people to the Lord. Because I used to be so far away from the Lord, but once I got to know him, I realized what a fool I was being. And I woke up and I saw the greatest chance and opportunity of a lifetime that I never imagined possible. And it's so amazing, so great, that nothing in this world compares to it. There's nothing in this world that I want to replace it with. So, you know, like my grandfather always said to me, nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ. And it's true. So please, please, if God is calling you, if the Lord is calling you, answer that call like Matthew did and celebrate because you will be entering into a new life that you never dreamt possible. God bless you and have a good day.